then. So today we're going to continue our discussion about income tax. Um, let's just recap briefly about where we left off. So we did lectures one and two already, right? Or we, we covered the content for lectures one and two already. And you'll remember, I'm just gonna show you the slide here. You'll remember that we spoke about uh, there's two types of differences between accounting profit and taxable profit. The first type of difference is um, permanent differences. And, and then we said there are also two categories of permanent differences. We have this thing called exempt income, which is income that cannot be taxed. Um, and remember with permanent differences, the difference never goes away, right? Um, so uh, uh, income that that is exempt or income that cannot be taxed must be subtracted or removed from accounting profit. Why? Because it has already been included in accounting profit. So you remove it in order to move closer to your taxable profit. Uh, or you subtract it in order to move closer to your taxable profit. And then um, when we have non-deductible expenses or expenses that are not allowed to be deducted for tax purposes, um, we then need to add it. And why are we adding it? Because it has been deducted um, earlier on when we were calculating our um, accounting profit. So in order to move from accounting profit closer to taxable profit, we need to add it back. Um, okay, so those are the two main or the or the only um, uh, permanent differences that we learned about. And uh, let's give some examples of each. Can anyone give me an example of exempt income? If you type out in the chat, we went through two. Uh, just type out the first one that comes to mind, and then which, whichever one you didn't get, I will I will tell you about. So type out the first exempt income that comes to. Correct. Dividends income from South African companies. Okay. Dividends income from South African companies is a um, exempt income. Uh, so the important thing is it's not dividends paid, right? That's uh, something. Uh, dividends paid is you paying dividends, and it's not dividends from foreign companies. It's only South African companies. Okay, because and the reason why is because it's already been taxed in dividends tax, and so therefore it is exempt for tax purposes. The other one that we learned about was the taxable capital gain. Remember, we spoke about uh, capital gains, and we said capital gains is when we sell something for more than it cost us or more than we purchased it for, so higher than the original cost. And um, in South Africa, we include 80% of that taxable gain in, in, in the um, taxable profit. So when we're looking at our uh, uh, calculation for taxable profits, we're moving from accounting profit to, to taxable profits. We're just going to see a minus 20% of the taxable gain, right? Because that's the exempt portion. All right, so those are the two exempt incomes. Anyone can give me a non-deductible expense um, a non-deductible expense. Anyone with a non-deductible expense? We did a few non-deductible expenses. Um, no one? <laughs> um, yeah, fines, yeah. Traffic fines, fines that are imposed by the government. So traffic fines, traffic penalties, interest uh, as a result of late submissions to SARS, um, yeah, penalties as a result of, of something that you did wrong with SARS, those, anything, any sort of fine or penalty or interest that is issued by the government that is going to be uh, non-deductible. The other uh, non-deductible expense that we, that we briefly spoke about was a donation if it was given to a profit company, right? So, so donations given to profit companies are not allowed. You're only allowed to donate or you're only allowed to deduct donations that are given to non-profit entities, okay? Non-profit companies. And so those are some of the non-deductible expenses. You will be told if the donation is deductible or non-deductible, okay? So that is 
permanent differences. Then we went on to temporary differences, the other types of differences, and we said there are three types. The first type is the one that we dealt with. We dealt with the accrual issue or, or accrual, the difference between accrual uh, system in accounting and the hybrid system in tax. Um, basically, what that meant is that for receivables, there will be no difference, right? So, so for debtors, there is no difference. Trade receivables, there's no difference because we both um, recognize it. The taxman and the accountant recognizes it at the time it's incurred. Sorry, at the time it's earned. Um, so there's no difference. But however, with income received in advance, there will be a difference, right? Because the accountant will only recognize it when it's earned, whereas the taxman will say, well, you received it, and so we want to include it now, right? Um, and and when we deal with sort of um, money leaving the entity, payables, again, no difference, and that's because we both include it when it's incurred. When it comes to provisions, the taxman says you can only deduct it when it is paid, whereas the accountant will want to uh, include it in taxable profits when it's incurred. Uh, pay, pay, prepayments, again, the accountant will not include it, and the taxman will include it, okay? Um, and so what we did uh, towards the end of the lecture, you'll remember when we did the situation here, where we looked at it, in, in the, the current or the, or the prior year in 2001, and then we looked at it again in 2002, we saw that what we are doing is we have to account for the closing and opening balances. Um, so in, in one year, we will add the, uh, uh, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a prepayment. So a prepayment, um, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, a prepayment, a pre prepaid expense. In, in the accounting profit, we would have not included it, right? So in year one, we have to minus it or reduce the accounting profit by the prepayment. But in year two, because we've included it last year, and the accountant now has included it in year two, we're going to have to do the reverse, right? So, so when we moving from taxable profit, I mean, from accounting profit to to, to to taxable profit in year two, we say, oh, the accountant has already included this prepayment, but the taxman included it last year, so we add it back, right? And so we did that situation where we we um, in the in the case of a prepayment, we would minus the closing balance, but add the opening balance, right? So so that relationship is what we spoke about towards the end of the lecture. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to move a little bit along with our, our discussion about temporary differences. So remember the first type of temporary difference or the first thing that causes a temporary difference is the difference between the accrual and the, um, and the hybrid system, right? The accountant uses the accrual system, the taxman uses the hybrid system. Today, we want to talk about the second thing that causes temporary differences, and that is depreciable assets or assets that can be depreciated. Now, you will remember that we said one of the things that the taxman will have in his calculation for uh, taxable profits is allowable deductions, right? And we spoke a little bit about general the general deduction formula. Um, but today we want to just focus in a little bit on some special deductions, right? And so, to, for, for example, for the first thing we're going to talk about is bad debts or credit losses, right? In accounting, we call it credit losses. The taxman might call it uh, bad debts. What basically is a bad debt? It is a debtor that has told us that they will not pay. Now, this is very different from the allowance right? The allowance for credit losses. What is the allowance for credit losses? The allowance for credit losses is when we say we believe that based on our uh, debtor's book, based on the number of debtors we have, a percentage of them will not pay us. So we say, oh, that percentage is, let's say, 2% of all of our debtors is not going to pay us, right? So now we're allowing or we're creating an expectation, a provision for that bad debt. So the, the bad debts is a debt that has gone bad and the person has told us that they're not going to pay. That's a real expense, right? Whereas a, an allowance or provision for bad debts or provision for credit losses is an estimate of a bad debt. Does everybody understand the difference between 
the the bad debts and the allowance for bad debts. And just give me a thumbs up in the chat if you understand the difference. Um, it can be something that maybe is a little bit confusing sometimes because both of them have the word credit losses or both of them have the word bad debts in it. Okay. Um, we're also going to chat a little bit about wear and tear. Uh, wear and tear, you're gonna, you guys are going to find out today, is um, another word for depreciation or it's depreciation for, uh, uh, for from the tax man's perspective, right? And so that's also what we're going to do we're going to talk about today. Okay, so let's just start off with the bad debts discussion, right? So the tax man says, listen, you can deduct bad debts from your taxable uh, profits only if, right? And so he's given us three criteria. What are the three criteria? One, it is due to the company. Now that's easy, right? If it's a bad debt, that means definitely we are owed a mo some money. So, so he's just saying here, you must be owed some money, right? So, so it, you must be owed some money. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a debt that's due to the company. The next is it says it must have gone bad. Right? So the person must have said that they are unable to pay you, right? So he doesn't want you, he's trying to eliminate the, the, the provision side. He's trying to eliminate the allowance. He says, I don't want this to be an allowance. The person must have actually said that they are bankrupt, right? And the last one is we must have included it in the taxable profits, either in the current year or in some year. So, so he must have actually taxed us on this amount in the past is what he's saying. So if we have those three criteria, he then says you can now deduct this bad debt from your taxable profits, right? So that's fairly easy, right? For account, from the accounting perspective, we would call it a credit loss. Um, and, and basically we would deduct the amount, amounts that have gone bad. Okay, now let's have a look at the allowance. Now again, when it comes to, when it comes to tax legislation, what you will see is that the, 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 uh, SARS, the taxman, does not trust our estimations, right? It does not trust the accountant's estimations. So uh, the provision for credit losses or the provision for bad debts or doubtful debts is in essence an estimate, right? So, so, so we are trying to estimate the amount of people that will not pay us in the future. Um, I hope that makes sense to everyone. So, so uh, because it's an estimate, uh, the tax um, the tax authority is very reluctant to give us that full uh, deduction to, to allow us to deduct it from our taxable profits. So instead, what he says is, OK, uh, because doing business in South Africa means that there is going to be a certain amount of people that will not pay you, right? Uh, they will not pay you. Then uh, I will allow you to deduct a percentage, right? A percentage of this allowance. Um, does that make sense? So, so I'll allow you to deduct a percentage of this allowance, and my the, the 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 percentage that you can deduct is going to be based on how you came up or how you created this uh, provision. Okay, so now he's looking at more. How did you come up with the estimate? If you came up with the estimate in a way that I uh, like then I'm going to allow you to, to deduct more of it, right? So he firstly says, if you've looked only for the next coming 12 months, right? So if you only looked at the next 12 months and you've only estimated for that next 12 months, then you can deduct 25%. Um, he then says, if you then have looked over the lifetime of the debtor, so you looked at the debtors individually, and you said, okay, I'm looking at the debtors individually and I'm assessing each of them separately, then you can deduct uh, 40,000. Now, the only reason why there's this difference is because we're actually in a change uh, in the way in which we create the, the credit loss, right? So in the past, we used to create credit losses over the 12 months, but recently we've seen a change in IFRS 9 that's asked us now to look at debtors individually and not um, uh, in aggregate. Now, for back 200, I will tell you in the question, the, um, for this provision or for this allowance, the, the tax authority allows 25% or allows 40%. So you don't need to make that determination. I will do that part for you. The part that I want you to, to be aware of is this last part uh, where, where we say that because it, it, the allowance changes from year to year, right? Because the allowance changes from year to year, 
We are then going to deduct the closing balance, right? But we're going to add back the opening balance. So very similar to what we did when we when we were speaking about the accruals, um, the, 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 the accrual uh, issues, right? We we deducted the the current year. Why? Because um, we are taking, we, we're claiming that allowance, but then we're adding back the prior year. The other thing that's important is you've got to understand that this allowance for credit losses has already had some effect on, a, on the accounting, uh, on the accounting profit. Um, so when you get, when you come to allowance for credit losses, there's three things that you need to do. You first need to eliminate the effect of uh, the allowance, right? So the movement of the allowance. Remember how remember how we create a provision or an allowance. We would say, okay, uh, uh, I, I believe that it's going to be, let's say, fifty thousand this year, right? And then I'll look at what my allowance was last year, and I'll say, oh, I only had an allowance of thirty thousand, so I'm only going to pass the movement, right? So that's the first effect that, or that's the only effect that the allowance will have on uh, accounting profit. Right. Um, so the first thing is you need to eliminate that that effect. The next thing you need to do is you then going to claim the deduction at 25 percent or 40 percent or whatever you you see in the question. So there's three things that you need to do. You need to eliminate the the effect of 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 the allowance on accounting profit. You then need to deduct the closing balance, and you're then going to add back. The opening balance at the relevant percentages. Now we're going to do an example that, that hopefully um, makes it a bit easier to understand. The first thing is I just want to remind you about our our template, right? So this is our template which we're going to always use, um, and so um, it's just good to, to understand where we are in the template. Uh, does anyone have any questions? So before we go on to the example, any questions? Um, this first example, okay, this first example is going to deal with the bad debts or credit losses. Now, I just want to remind us, in order for there to be, in order for us to deduct the, the bad debts, you must, it must be due to the company, it must have gone bad, and it must have been included in taxable profits sometime in the past. So, it must have been taxed on it, right? So, let's have a look at this example and let's see if it makes more sense. So, the first one is only dealing with the bad debts, the next one will be dealing with the credit losses, uh, allowance for credit losses. Okay, so let's first deal with this one. So it says, calculate the taxable income of uh, F Limited for 2002. It says, at the end of the previous year, so 2001, um, F Limited had debtors of 400,000. Okay, so they had debtors of 400,000. And this was included, uh, sorry, uh, which included a debtor, Mr. P Limited of 10,000 rand. In the current year, which is 2002, Mr. P's Limited, um, or Mr. P's declared bankruptcy before he could pay the 10,000 rand. And according to his lawyers, there is no possibility of a liquidation dividend. What is a liquidation dividend? A liquidation dividend um, comes about when a company is bankrupt and basically they have some money in the company, but not enough to cover the debts. So let's say they have debts of, a, of 1 million rand, but they only have money in the company of 500,000. That would mean a liquidation dividend of 50 cents to the rand. So they're only going to give you 50 cents for every rand they owe you. And that's and that's the ratio uh, because it's 500,000 to a million um, is 50%. Okay. Um, so so here we, we're told that there's no liquidation dividend. So that means they're going to give us zero for every rand that they owe us. So they, we're going to get nothing. Okay. Um, we then hear that does everybody understand that story about the liquidation dividend? If we have a situation where, let's say, the liquidation dividend is 40 cents to the rand, we would then say, okay, we're going to get 4,000 rand back on this debt. Why 4,000 rand? Because we said they owe us 10,000 rand. We're going to get 40 cents for every rand that they owe us. So it's 
So therefore, we will get 4,000 Rand back, which means only 6,000 Rand has gone bad. Only 6,000 Rand will not be paid. Can we think of it as a last payout to creditors? It actually is a last payout to creditors. That's exactly what it is, yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay, so let's see now what we, what we have in the next paragraph. It says the profit before tax for the year ended 2002 is 200,000 Rand after taking into account the following information. It says local dividends, right? Local dividends means South African dividends received of 2000 Rand, right? So that's dividend income. And then a speeding fine of 1000 Rand. Okay, so what are we going to do with the dividends? Are we going to subtract or add the dividends to accounting profit? Right, we're going to subtract the dividend. Right, everyone understand why we're subtracting the dividend? Because it was added already in accounting profit. So now we want to remove the added effect. So we subtract the dividend. With the speeding fine, we're going to add it. Yeah? Okay, we're adding the speeding fine. Why are we adding the speeding fine? Because it was subtracted when we calculated accounting profit, right? So now when we want to remove the effect, we need to add the fine, the speeding fine back. Okay, let's um, start off with that. Okay, so you're going to see here what we've done is we've said we brought in the profit before tax, which we were given, right? That The, the 200,000 was given. We then subtract the dividend income, right? And we, and we say we subtract it because it's an exempt income. We're removing the dividends as it's ex exempt and does not need to be taxed again. Okay, um, and we then going to say, okay, the speeding fine is a non-deductible expense. So because it was already deducted, we add it back, right? Which gives us permanent differences of 100,000, I mean, uh, 1,000 rand. Right now, let's have a look at let's have a look at, at at the debt now. So this is the important part, the bad debt. So the bad debt says we uh, the the Mr. P's is not going to pay us ten thousand rand. So from the accounting perspective, how would we have treated that? Right. So how would the accountant treat it? Will he subtract it from profit or will he add it to profit? No, it means the the uh, so so someone said here. Does it mean uh, okay? So so everyone's asking, uh, everyone's answering correctly about the bad debt. We said for the from, for the accountant, the accountant will subtract it. But then someone's also asked when it says the following has been taken into account. Does it mean they've already? Uh, subtracted it. No, that doesn't mean they've already subtracted. That means that in calculating profit before tax, they've taken these things into account. Into account. So we need to undo what they've done. That's what it means. Okay. I hope that answers the question. But back to what everyone is answering. Everyone's saying, okay, when we have a bad debt, we would subtract it from accounting profit. So if we were to remove the effect, if we want to remove that effect, right? What are we going to do? We're going to add the bad debt back. We're going to add the credit loss back, right? But then we also realize that for the tax for from, for tax purposes, we can deduct this debt because it was included in in prior year 2001 or before. Whenever we whenever it went into revenue, it was included, and um, and it is a debt that's gone bad. We can see that we can't get uh, the, the the lawyers have told us we can't get any money on that ten thousand rand. So we would also be allowed to deduct it for tax purposes. So in effect, we've got something that does not have any uh, temporary difference. But I just wanted to sh uh, uh, show it to you like this so for for the accounting for the accounting um effect we remove the the effect of the accounting uh deduction right and we do that by adding it back and we say listen we're undoing the credit losses that we would have subtracted when we calculated accounting profit but then for tax purposes because it meets all the criteria we are now able to 
we are now able to add that amount back. Now, guys, uh, I've got a question for you now. Now, let's say that we were only so we, we uh, the, the, the lawyers told us that we're going to get a 60% or 60 cents to the rand, right? So the lawyer said, listen, I think you can get 60 cents to the rand, okay? But from our perspective, we don't think that we're going to receive anything. So the accountant might have rem removed the whole 10,000. But the taxman will say, because you, because the lawyer said you can get 60%, he will only allow you to, to remove 6,000. So you need to just be very careful when it comes to liquidation dividend, because sometimes we might give you information uh, that tells you, we estimate that we're not going to get anything back, but the lawyers estimate that we can. Um, and so you, the taxman will go with the lawyers, but the accountant will go with what, with what he has estimated. Right? So that's just a sort of aside a story a story that needs to be told at some other time um okay does everybody understand that there's no difference especially if the whole amount can be deducted all right now i just want to quickly talk to you about um tem about exam technique all right now what you're going to see We would not account. No, so I'm saying if if the accountant believes that he's not going to get anything back, correct? Right? The accountant thinks, oh, I'm not going to get anything back, but the lawyers believe that we can get something back. The taxman will go with what the lawyers are saying, but the accountant will go with what he believes. So the accountant might remove the full 10,000, but the taxman will say, listen, only you can only deduct the amount that's gone bad which is going to be let's say 40 percent of the debt um that's what i'm trying to say now but 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 also what i want to talk to you about is exam technique now what you will find is that in your test and exam you're not going to get one debtor right so now i'll give you let's say three debtors they've all gone bad all three have gone bad however one of them has not been included in taxable profits before. Now, that is when this method of, of preparing the, the taxable profits is important. You need to remove the effect of all of the debtors, right? The, the, the accounting effect of all of the debtors, but then only account for the debtors that meet the criteria, okay? So just, I know this seems this example seems like why would we do this if the if the net amount is zero, but it's a good exam technique to do it like this because it helps us later on when we have situations where uh, not all the amounts can be deducted. Okay. Okay. Cool. That was that's supposed to be the easy one. Okay. Let's have a look at the next one. So the next one is the allowance for expected credit losses, right? So we say in the allowance for expected credit losses, the accountant will deduct the movement of the allowance from one year to the next. The tax authority will allow a deduction, a percentage of, of, that, uh, of the allowance to be deducted. And because um, they only allow the deduction or they allow the deduction um, from one year to the next, it means we need to deduct the closing balance, but add back the opening balance, right? So that we get the, the tax movement only. Okay, and, and again, it's exam technique. I want you to do it exactly like this in order to get the maximum amount of marks. The other thing I just want you to um, be aware of is, um, for example, if we look at this, if we look at this question here, we have showed the subtract the subtract by putting the amount in brackets. You can also show the subtract if you say the word less or if you say the word add next to dividend. So if I said less dividends received, um, that's another way for me to show that I'm, I'm trying to deduct the dividends, okay? I, I think that it sounds a bit um, easy for you guys to get, but anyway. 
let me just continue. So it says, um, so here we have sort of similar situation. We've got profit before tax of 200,000. They were already taken into account the dividends, which we know we would subtract. They were already taken into account a fine, which we know we're gonna add back. Now, this is the important part. The allowance for expected credit losses is 50,000. So that's the closing balance. It's 50,000 in 2009 and 40,000 in 2008. Right, the full amount of the allowance for expected credit losses qualifies for 25% deduction in terms of the tax act. So that's where I told you, I will tell you what percentage to use, right? So that's what it will look like in your testing exam. Now we need to prepare the taxable income. Now I'm not gonna focus on the permanent differences because they're exactly the same as what we did in the last example, right? And you guys were pretty good at that. I want to focus in on the allowance for credit losses. Okay, number one, what is the effect of this allowance on accounting profit? What is the effect of this allowance on counting, uh, accounting profit? So did we add or did we subtract and then give me the amount? What did we add or what did we subtract and what is the amount? What do you guys think? What is the effect of this allowance on the counting profit? So you, you, you need to remember that for counting profit, for accounting profit, we would only account for the movement, right? We're only going to account for the movement. Right, so the movement is what? We moved from 2018, 40,000 to 50,000. So, yes, yes, so it's increased by, by, by um, the, the provision has increased by 10,000 rand. So the movement then would have been, think about the journal entries. What were the, uh, let, let's talk about the journal entries. The journal entries would have been debit, movement in credit losses, credit, allowance for expected credit losses, or provision for expected credit losses. That's what the journal entry would have been, and it will only have been for 10,000 rand. So we would have subtracted accounting profit, or we would have decreased accounting profit by the movement of 10,000 rand. So if we need to, remember we said with, with, the, with, with the allowance, we need to do three things. The first thing is we need to remove the effect of, that the allowance had on accounting profit. So if we had to remove the effect of uh, this movement, we would then add back the, the 10,000 rand. Does everybody understand how we got to that explanation? Just tell me if you understand. So, okay, so let's just repeat it. In calculating accounting profit, we would take the movement of the expected credit loss to accounting profit. This, this has got nothing to do with tax. So far, we're not talking about tax. What is the movement? In the current year, in 2019, the movement is 10,000 rand. So what would have happened? We would have, we would have decreased profit by 10,000 rand. Okay. So the first step in dealing with credit losses is we need to remove the effect of that decrease. How do we remove the effect? We add it back. Okay. Did I, did I did more people get it now, or are we still confused? Tell me where you at. You can put on your mic if you if you're really struggling with this concept. Okay. No one seems to want to volunteer. Okay. Um, and then, so that's part one. Part two is we need to deduct the closing balance. So what is the closing balance here? The closing, uh, not this one, this one. The closing balance is 50,000 Rand. So we're going to deduct 25% of 50,000 Rand. The last step is to add back the opening balance. The opening balance is 40, so we'll add back 25% of 40,000 rand. So the increase, if we if we had to increase, if the credit expected credit losses had to increase, we would debit 
the adjustments to the provision or the, uh, it depends. I don't know what you guys were taught in in in, sec, in first year, but it would be something along the lines of adjustment to allowance in expected care losses or adjustment to the provision of doubtful debts, right? So it would be that will be debit. You debit that. That's a um, income statement account, and then you would credit the allowance for expected credit losses or the provision for doubtful debts. Right, you would credit the liability. So that journal entry would be the journal entry that you would have passed, and that journal entry would have decreased profit by ten thousand rand. Does that make sense? Mm. Yes, the adjustment would have been an expense. Yes. Adjustment is an expense. Yes. Okay. Let's let's have a look. Okay. So here what we've done is we've removed the effect of the credit losses or the movement of the credit losses on accounting profit. Now we said the effect would have been decrease of ten thousand rand. So here we're going to add back that ten thousand rand. That's the movement, right? All right. That's step one. Step two, want to subtract the closing balance. One, sorry, step two, we want to subtract the closing balance. So we take the closing balance, which is 50,000 Rand, multiplied by 25%, which we are given in the question, and we subtract that from uh, accounting profit. But because we have already subtracted uh, the 40,000 last year, we then now need to add back that 40,000 Rand, right? Because it was it was subtracted in the 2018 um, uh, calculation like this. So we add that one back of 10,000 rand. Does everybody understand the reason why we're doing this? Right? It's, it's, uh, I, I get that the numbers are super important, right? Um, and you guys can play around with the numbers at home, but the more important thing is I want you to know why we're doing it. Because if you know why, then you'll be able to do it on your own. Is everybody still with me? Yes. Zanda is with me, but I don't know if the others are with me. Okay. Um, if you guys have questions, then you need to ask them now, right? Because we're going to move on. Please explain why we add the 10,000 Rand back. Okay. The first 10,000 Rand, the accounting profit, 10,000 Rand, the accounting profit was decreased by 10,000 Rand when we made a, when we changed the provision, right? So we want to remove the effect of that uh, provision on accounting profit. Want to remove the effect. Now, I decreased accounting profit, so we added back, right, to remove the effect. That's what we, that's the first step. Are we basically doing? Yes, exactly. We're doing this entire thing is about reconciling accounting profit to taxable profit. This is that's the entire idea. Um, will we always subtract the closing balance? You'll always subtract the closing balance and add the opening balance for credit losses. Right. So the important thing is for credit losses. Because when we start talking about other types of um, things, like maybe uh, income received in advance, right? Then it might be a totally different uh, situation. Right? So for credit losses, you'd always subtract the closing balance, and you're gonna add back the opening balance. Yes. Um, so. Uh, I was explaining the 10,000 Rand, we subtract it because that was the movement in provision, right? That we had already recorded in the accounting profit. So we, so we had subtracted the accounting profit by 10,000 Rand. Now we add it back to remove the accounting effect, right? But then we replace it with the tax effect. Now what's the tax effect? The tax effect is 25%. Um, so, so the tax effect is basically 25% of the movement. 
right? And the movement was 10,000 Rand this year. So we then need to, um, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the closing balance of, uh, and that's gonna be 25% of 50. We're gonna add back the, the opening balance, which is 25% of 40. And then the net effect is that we've just recorded the 25% of the movement. Can I, so that's basically what we're trying to do here. But we have to show it like this to try and get the maximum amount of marks. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Right. So that was credit losses. Now we're going to chat about um, the depreciable assets, right? So depreciable assets, again, the, the rates of depreciation between the accountant and the taxman is they're going to be different, right? There are two main types of um, depreciation for tax purposes. Now, from now, from now going onwards, we're not going to call it depreciation for tax purposes. We're going to call it wear and tear. And where do we get that name wear and tear? It comes from section 11E, right, which, which is actually the section that deals with uh, wear and tear uh, or depreciation for tax purposes. And basically, in that section, it gives us the different rates that we might use, right? So there's an appendix to the section that gives us the different rates that we might use for different machines. Um, and so it just tells us, you know, there's, there's a whole there's a whole lot of rates that it'll give us there. But but um, the important thing is that for tax purposes, we always claim wear and tear on a straight line method. So there's no reducing balance. There's no uh, usage method. And, and I think the important thing to note is that um, from the accounting perspective, we want to depreciate the asset based on how we use it, right? So that's why you find that the accountants have lots of different ways to depreciate the asset. But for the tax, from the tax man's perspective, he has already established these rates, and that is how he's going to depreciate it. And it's it's got nothing to do with how the entity or management intends to use that specific uh, machinery. So, so it's, it's so it's the, the 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 way the taxman does it is totally almost arbitrary to uh, or it has no relevance to what's actually happening with the um, with the uh, uh, asset, right? So we can for, from the accounting perspective, we would want to depreciate it how it's being used. We would also want to test for impairment and all that. For the taxman's perspective, he doesn't care. He's determine these rates and that's the rates he's going to use right so uh what you need to know is that it's all from for wear and tear is always on a straight line basis um and you will be given the rates that the taxman is using in your question there's also a special wear and tear allowance which uh, it, it almost accelerates the the depreciation uh, and that wear and tear allowance is called section 12c allowance um, what it basically means is that it's 40% in the first year that we, we buy the um, the asset, and then 20% for the three for the next three years, right? And this specific deduction is never apportioned. Okay, you will always be told um, when it's apportioned and when it's not apportioned. Um, and for 12C, we never apportioned it. For for uh, 11e we will apportion it but i will tell you that in the question right so so 12c is never apportioned it's 40 percent in the first year and then the next three years is 20 percent each which makes a total of 100 percent it's only offered or it's only given 12c is only given to entities that are manufacturing right so it has to be they must be manufacturing and basically it's um to try and incentivize those companies that are manufacturing in South Africa to manufacture more. That's why they give you that big 40% in the first year and, and they don't apportion it to try and uh, encourage people to buy machines and manufacture in South Africa. Um, again, if it's a 12C allowance, I will tell you that in the question and I'll also tell you the rates that are, I'll repeat the rates uh, that basically I'll tell you it's 40, 20, 20, 20, um, and then it, that it's not apportioned. Okay, we just want to look at a few terms, guys. So for 
from the accounting perspective, depreciation. Depreciation is basically the expensing of an asset, right? And it's generally the expensing of an asset in the way in which we use it, right? Um, and then wear and tear. Wear and tear is depreciation for tax purposes, but going forward, we're not going to call it that. We're going to call it wear and tear. Um, and basically, wear and tear is determined on the standard rates which the taxman has come up with, and it's not related to the way in which we use the asset. So, the, so you can have one entity who will buy the asset uh, as an investment property, and another entity which will buy the asset, let's say, for for production, but they will both get the same wear and tear um, benefits. Okay. And then, for the, from the accounting perspective, the carrying amount, carrying amount is very easy. Carrying amount is the original cost uh, that we purchased the asset at, less the accumulated depreciation, right, to the date, uh, to, to this date. And um, when it comes also to depreciation, we apportion it for part of the year, uh, but with wear and tear, you will be told in the question whether or not you should apportion it. Okay. Then when we look at uh, the tax side, uh, another, uh, the tax word for carrying amount is the tax base, all right? Um, it, and it's calculated very similarly. It's the original cost, less accumulated wear and tear, okay? So it's, it, it, it's, it's the mirror image of the carrying amount. It's just because the wear and tear amounts are different, right? The wear and tear uh, rates are different from the depreciation rates. Therefore, the tax base will be different from the carrying amount. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, the important thing is that in all of your questions that you're going to encounter, you need to keep a track of all of these figures, right? So you're just basically doing um, a carrying amount calculation, but you're doing it times two for the same asset. Okay, so you're calculating tax base, you're calculating wear and tear, you're calculating depreciation and carrying amount. You just got to keep track of these amounts because that's going to help you in answering your questions uh, and getting the right answers. Okay, any questions so far about the terms that we've um, chatted about? Makes sense. Okay, we're going to do one more example, then I want to go for a break. Um, and then we'll come back after that. Okay, so let's do this example. Uh, in part one, they want us to calculate the carrying amount and tax base from the from 2001 to 2003. In part two, we need to calculate the taxable income for H Limited for the end of 2003. So we told H Limited purchased a vehicle in 2001, uh, January 2001, at um, 100,000 Rand. The company writes off depreciation on vehicles at 20% straight line method, where SARS allows a wear and tear allowance also on a straight line basis of four years, right? So 20% is how many years? If, if, if from the accounting perspective, we're saying, okay, we do 20% depreciation a year, how many years is that? Five years, correct. So the accountant is working on five years, the tax man is working on four years. So now there's a difference between the wear and tear and depreciation. Therefore, there's going to be a difference in the tax base and the calendar amount. Okay. Um, and then the last part is going to be related to part two, which we'll come back to. So now they tell us, let's look at the first part. They say, okay, calculate the carry amount, calculate the tax base from 2001 to 2003. Because we bought it at the beginning of the year, there's no need to apportion uh, 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 depreciation, right? So we bought it on the 1st of January and our year end is 31st December. So there's no need to apportion. If we bought it in the middle of the year, we're going to have to apportion depreciation, right? And then we would have to, had to look out um, uh, in the question for whether or not we need to apportion wear and tear. But in this case, we don't need to worry too much. Um, so what we did is we said depreciation 20% of the uh, cost, which is 100,000, that's going to give us 20,000 Rand depreciation in year one. Um, similar situation for wear and tear, it'll give us 25% though, uh, 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 wear and tear, which is 25,000 
uh, in year one. Um, that means at the end of year one, we've got a carrying amount of 80, our tax base of 75. We do that again for year two, we get 60 and 50. We do that again for year three, and we end up with 40 and 25,000 as our tax base. Okay, now what is important? The important thing to note is that when you are asked this question in your tests or exams, you have to use this table, critically important, right? So, so that's very, very important. The next is, it's important for you to know what are the number of years that are being used, right? So, uh, for example, in this question, we had the accountant using five years, the tax man using four years, and what are the percentages that are being used? So in this, again, here, the accountant was 20% and the tax man was 25%, okay? Um, and then the last one, the last thing that I wanted to point out to you is that if we had bought or sold the asset, uh, in the middle of the year, we would have to apportion the depreciation for the part that we had the asset, and then we would have had to read the question to identify if we need to apportion the wear and tear. Okay, you will be told in the question whether or not to apportion the wear and tear. Okay, any questions? I assume you guys know how to apportion depreciation for part of the year, because that is something that you would have covered in PPE. All right. Yes. Yeah, of the months. Yes. I mean, I mean, months of the year. Year of the months. Months of the year. Yes. Okay. Now let's have a look at the last uh, uh, required. So the last required says, okay, let's calculate the taxable profits for H Limited for the year ended 31st December 2003. We've got a profit for the year of 200,000 Rand. We've got that dividends of 2,000 Rand, which we're going to subtract. We've got the fine, right? We've got the fine of um, 1,000 Rand, which we're going to add back. And yes, yeah, we're gonna add it back, correct? Uh, so I'm not gonna cover that in detail when we look at the, the solution, right? I'm not, I'm not worried about that because you guys got that. Now, the thing I want to focus on is the depreciation. What would we have done with the depreciation for accounting purposes? Would we have added it to profit or subtracted it from profit? What's your answer? Add or subtract the depreciation when we were calculating. So when we were calculating accounting profit, we would have subtracted it. So now in order to remove the effect of the depreciation, we must add it back. Does, does that make sense to everyone? In order to remove the effect of the depreciation, we need to add it back, right? So that's removing the accounting treatment, right? So what we're doing is we're removing the accounting treatment. We're adding back the depreciation. Now, in order to replace that accounting treatment with the tax treatment, what do you think we need to do with the wear and tear allowance? Should we add or subtract the wear and tear allowance. Remember what we did is we removed the accounting uh, treatment. We want to replace it with the tax tax treatment, the tax treatment, and the tax treatment says that we have wear and tear of 25,000. Would you add or subtract the wear and tear? Would you add or subtract the wear and tear? Yes, that's correct. We're gonna subtract the wear and tear. So let's have a look at what that looks like. All right, so again, I'm not focusing too much on the permanent differences because we've already done that a few times, but here is what we're doing. We're adding the depreciation back. Why are we adding it back? Because it was subtracted when we are calculating accounting profit already. So we're adding that back, um, but then we're subtracting the wear and tear because we're trying to replace the accounting treatment of this asset with the tax treatment. So we're subtracting wear and tear. Okay, that's going to give us a net temporary difference of 5,000 Rand, which we will then minus from, from accounting profit to give us taxable profits. Everyone understand that uh, example? Are there any questions about that example? Okay, 
Cool. So what we're going to do is now we'll take a break, and when we come back, we will um, we will chat about the next part. Okay. We'll chat about what happens when we sell the asset. Okay. Cool. Oh, I uh, should tell you, we will meet back, let's say, at 8. Let's say at 8.35. Let me put it in the chat. 8.35. So we'll meet at 8.35. Okay, see you guys. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Sorry, I just had to step out for a few minutes. If you've got any questions about the lecture that just finished, um, you can ask me now. Or if not, we can just wait.
Okay, let's get started, guys. Um, so we're going to continue on with our discussion about the depreciable asset, right? Now, so far, you guys will remember, I told you that depreciation and wear and tear are going to be calculated at different rates, right? Which will result in different carrying amounts and therefore different tax base. Okay, now that's okay. You guys seem to be fine with, with, with that explanation. But now, what happens when we sell this specific asset? What do you think is going to be different? Because the carrying amount and tax base are different, what will be different when we sell the, the asset? The start with a P. The profit or loss, correct. The profit or loss on the sale of the asset will be different. Now, similarly to the words for depreciation and carry amount, you saw that the tax the, the tax side has different words for it, right? So for depreciation, they call it wear and tear. For carrying amount, they call it uh, tax base. Similarly, for profit on sale, the taxman calls it something different. And for the loss on sale, the taxman calls it something different. So let's have a look at the way that the taxman would do it. Now, you guys would remember we already chatted about a situation where we've sold an asset for more than it costs, right? Remember when we sell an asset for more than it costs, it gives a rise to a capital gain, and we only include 80% of that capital gain in um, accounting profits, and we actually include it under permanent differences. Can you guys remember that? Give me a thumbs up if you remember about the uh, taxable capital gain and how to calculate it. All right. Okay. So that's when we sell a asset for more than it had costed us. Okay. That's when we sell an asset for more than it had costed us. We would have created a capital gain. Um, if we sell an asset for an amount above its tax base, so again, what's a tax base? It's basically the carrying amount for tax purposes. If we sell an amount for above uh, for an amount that's above its tax base we would then have what's called a recoupment a recoupment is basically the same as a profit on sale in 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 accounting right it's the same as a profit on sale in accounting uh, basically what the tax man is saying is in the past i gave you a deduction of wear and tear Right. So the taxman is saying to you, listen, in the past, I gave you a deduction for wear and tear, but clearly you um, you did not deserve that deduction. Right. Because now you've sold this um, asset for more than its tax base. Right. So either the value of the asset didn't decrease as fast as I thought it was going to decrease or you were you know, just able to maintain the asset uh, in a better condition than than we thought you were keeping the asset in but anyway you sold it for more than the tax base so what you have done the taxman says is you have recouped recouped mean to recoup something means to get it back to 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 um uh, to repair it or to restore it right so so the taxman says you have recouped your wear and tear and that's why um when you make a sale of an asset that's above its tax base, the taxman says you have gotten a recoupment. He's basically talking about you having a recoupment of your wear and tear. So the recoupment is calculated very similarly to the way we would calculate um, a profit on, on um, sale. Now, the important thing to note is that in a situation where the selling price is below the original cost, then it's easy to calculate the recoupment. We just take the selling price minus the tax base, and that would give us our recoupment. Um, however, if we have a, um, a selling price that is above the original cost, right, then we're going to have to calculate two types of uh, profit for tax purposes. The first profit is going to be that capital gain, right, which we, which we calculated um, already in the past, but we're going to do an example now where we'll calculate it again, right? We're going to calculate that capital gain 
Um, and remember the capital gain, only 80% of the capital gain will be included in taxable profits, right? I'm going to take you through a, a way of calculating or working through the capital gain that's going to make it a lot easier to, 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 to um, calculate it because we're going to do it step by step. Um, and then, so if we have a selling price that's above the original cost, then we're going to have to say, okay, from the original cost now, down to tax base is going to be out of coupon. Does everybody understand why we need two profits um, for tax purposes if we sell above original cost? Does everybody understand that we need the capital gain portion as well as the recoupment portion? Okay. Um, all right. So some people are getting it. If you're not getting it, if you don't understand why we need two profits, just uh, let us um, know. Let me know. So um, again, like I said, if if our our selling price is below original cost, please can you explain? Okay. So we said if we sell an asset for above original cost, we will have a capital gain, right? Eighty percent of that capital gain is going to go into taxable profits. If we sell an asset above original cost. The issue is that because we've sold it above original cost, it still is above the tax base, right? Remember the tax base is carrying amount for tax purposes. So it's above the tax base. So the difference between the original cost and the tax base is then going to be the recoupment. Okay, the, uh, does that explain it, Gabby? Do you understand? What we, we, we'll put some numbers to it just now. Maybe that will help you. Um, so yeah. Okay, so the important things to note is don't go adding the capital gain and the recoupment and think that you're going to get accounting profit, right? Why will you not get accounting profit? Can anyone tell me why if I add the capital gain plus the recoupment, why I won't get accounting profit, right? Then does, everybody, does, does anyone know why I won't get accounting profit? The reason is the wear and tear is different from the depreciation, 100%. Yes, that is the reason. Remember, when we're calculating accounting profit, we're using carrying amount, right? Carrying amount is calculated by cost less accumulated depreciation. Now, because that accumulated depreciation is calculated at a different rate to accumulated wear and tear, and because the tax base is different from the carrying amount, you will always get a different accounting profit. That's correct. Yes, the rates of depreciation between wear and tear and depreciation is different. The rates of expensing is different. Okay. Um, just to, uh, this is sort of like a PPE uh, side. Um, remember that when we're calculating for accounting purposes, we, uh, if we're calculating uh, profit on sale of asset, we would say selling price ma minus carrying amount. Okay, I, I didn't mention that explicitly, but because I thought you guys would would remember that. Um, lastly, in your textbook, you're going to see a lot of the textbook is going to talk about situations where the the base cost, right, which is the tax man's word for original cost, right? The base cost is different from the original cost. In uh, back 200, you must always know that the base cost is going to equal the original cost, right? The base cost in back 200 will always equal um, the original cost. Okay, cool. Um, any questions so far? The one question that you should have. Um, which I don't know if anyone has is what happens if we sell right the asset for less than the base uh, tax base for less than the tax base what happens if we sell the asset for less than the tax base then we're going to make what we call a a, a a loss on sale for tax purposes but the tax man has another word for that he calls that a scrapping allowance a scrapping allowance Okay, so, 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 so far we've learned that um, the non-capital portion of profit is called the recoupment. 
the capital portion of profit is called the taxable capital gain. And if there's a loss on sale of the asset, we call it a scrapping allowance. Okay, so that's a new term, another new term that we learned today, scrapping allowance. So, the selling price. So, is the selling price the full 100% or 80% of the asset? I don't understand the question. Um, yeah, the taxman likes changing names. Uh, so so uh, we, we'll do an example now. Maybe that might help with that question. I don't really understand that question. Um, but yeah, okay. So anyway, um, this is what I wanted to remind you about. When we're calculating recoupment, we're going to limit the selling price to the cost of the asset. And we're going to minus it from the from the tax base, right? Remember, because we want to get that portion between original cost and and um, tax base. And so basically, we're trying to say it's the wear and tear that you've gotten back in the form of profit. Um, um, uh, however, with capital gains, we take the the eighty percent of that capital gain. Uh, with with uh, with the um, scrapping allowance, again, it's like the loss on sale. We're going to say, okay, what is the tax base, right? What did you sell it for? The difference between the tax base and what you sold it for is going to be your technically your loss on sale, and we're going to call that the scrapping allowance. And for that, the taxman will then allow you a deduction, right? Just like how when you have a loss on sale in accounting, you minus it from profit, right? When you have a scrapping allowance, you're going to minus it from, from your, your taxable profits. Um, however, when you have a recoupment, just like how when you have a profit on sale uh, in accounting, you add it to profits. When you have a recoupment, you're going to add it to your, to your, to your profit, um, to your taxable income. Okay, does that make sense? So you treat it in the same way. Just like when you minus, you minus a loss on sale, you minus the scrapping allowance, you minus the the uh, profit on sale i mean you add the profit on sale you would add the recoupment right so you treat it in the same way as you would um in accounting um okay so now this is important the scrapping allowance is not the same as a capital loss we're not dealing with capital losses in back to 100 um but just just remember that um, the 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 scrapping allowance is not again never call, call it a capital loss because there is such a thing as a capital loss which we'll deal with probably next year um, but this is not it okay so th this is not it um, okay any questions after we did the the theory can we move on to an example Right. I, I do understand that there were some questions that were not answered. We are going to answer them, or we hopefully going to answer them now, um, and then we can we can swing back and ask if everything's okay. Okay. So we've got three scenarios here, right? Um, so what we what we asked to do is we asked to calculate the accounting profit, right, or the loss on sale or disposal as well as the recoupment scrap or the scrapping allowance to be deducted from um, taxable income under the following circumstances, right? So the first one, we'll deal with A first, and we said that we're selling the good, or we're selling the asset for 100,000 Rand, and then we're also told to calculate or to determine the taxable income for A, um, so let's just do A first and we'll return and look at the rest, okay? So let's have a look at the information. So the information tells us, I Limited sold an asset for 100,000. Sorry, I Limited sold an asset with an original cost of 100,000, okay? So, and that's our selling price. So we, so we bought it for 100,000 and now we've sold it for 100,000. So technically it hasn't lost value. Anyway, so, so the original cost was 100,000. The carrying amount, 
and the tax base is 75 and 60 respectively. 75,000 and 60,000 respectively. So the carrying amount is 75,000, the tax base is 60,000. We can see that the tax man was depreciating faster than, than the accountant, okay? Uh, uh, and it was sold on the last day of the financial year. Why is that important? Because we don't need to then apportion anything, okay? There's no need to apportion anything, okay? Now it says the accounting profit is 200,000 rand. Um, the, so so the, the following was already taken into account. They already took into account the disposal of the asset, right? They took into account depreciation, right? Uh, and this depreciation is already in this uh, 75,000, right? They took into account dividends received. Now we know that we're gonna subtract the dividends received we're going to add the fine, the, the, the speeding fine. And then we assume that the wear and tear for the current year is 4,000 Rand. And it has already been included in the 60,000 Rand. Okay. So now first let's start off with part A. So part A asks us to um, determine the accounting profit or loss on disposal and the recoupment. Okay, so how would we go about calculating it if we sold the asset for 100,000? We'd say, okay, we sold the asset for 100,000, right? We then want to look at what the carrying amount is for accounting purposes, right? So then we've made a profit of 25 for accounting purposes. Everyone, does that make sense to everyone? Anyone lost? Anyone lost so far? Okay, no one lost, right? So again, we for tax purposes, we say, okay, our tax base is 60,000. Well, how much have we made? We've made a recoupment of 40,000, right? Or a, a tax profit, let's call it a tax profit of 40,000. Everyone understand that? Everybody understand how we got these figures? Okay, great. So that is part A. Part A was asking us, okay, please calculate the, the accounting profit and the recoupment. Okay, do we need to, in, in this first example, we didn't need to limit the selling price to the cost price because the, the selling price and the cost price were equal, right? So you're going to have a look at part B just now when we're going to need to limit it, but just keep that in mind. Let's move on, oh, we're going to have a look at scenario B. Right, where we're going to need to do it. But now let's move on to number two or the required two. Required two says that we need to calculate the taxable profits for the year. Okay, so we would start off with the with the um, two hundred thousand. We're then going to subtract or remove the dividend income. We're going to add back the speeding fine right so those stuff we're not we're not super interested in um now what are we going to do with the depreciation what are going to what are we going to do with the depreciation what's your operation with the depreciation remember when calculating the yes add it back yes but let, let's talk about why we're doing that because when we were calculating the accounting profit we subtracted the depreciation we want to remove the tax effect Right, so now we're going to mine. Uh, 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 we, we sorry, we minus it when we were calculating the accounting profit. We want to now remove the effect of depreciation, so we're going to add it back. Right, we're going to add back the depreciation, and what are we going to replace it with? We're going to replace it with wear and tear. How are we going to do that? We're going to subtract the wear and tear. Right, so we add back depreciation, we subtract the wear and tear. What we are in effect doing is removing the accounting treatment and replacing it with the tax treatment. Right, so that's what we're going to do. Now, what are we going to do with the profit? Right, so let's do the same thing as we did with the depreciation with the profit. Right, we remove the accounting treatment and replace it with the tax treatment. How would we do that? Right. So you, then you need to ask yourself, okay, so what did I do with the profit when calculating accounting profit? I added it, 
right so what we'll do now is we'll subtract the profit and we're going to replace it with the recoupment which means we're going to do what to the recoupment add it back right so we we simply replacing it with the tax treatment let's have a look at what that looks like so if we have a look at this slide here right we say okay we got the the the, the 200000 which we are given in the question right i'm not worried about that we here we minus the uh, um, dividend received we added the prime okay that stuff we're not worried about now look at what we did with depreciation we added the depreciation back because we're removing the effect of depreciation and then we minus the 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 wear and tear all right we list the wear and tear that's because we're now replacing that depreciation with the tax effect uh, when we look at how we treated the the sale we again we minus the profit the accounting profit on sale right because we're basically saying listen we don't we want to eliminate the effect of this accounting profit and we replaced it by the recoupment right which means we added the recoupment back any questions so far about what we've done does everybody understand the 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 uh, why we're doing it why we're adding why we're subtracting why we're adding why we're subtracting because there's a few guys who definitely get it i can see that but then there's also some people that are very quiet so just if you if you're not understanding why we're adding and why we're subtracting then just you know let us know okay so shall we move on then to scenario b right so in scenario b we now sell the asset for 120,000, right? So this is more than the cost. So in red, we're gonna do accounting first. What would we do for accounting? We would say, okay, we got 120 sale, right? What would be the accounting profit? What would be the accounting profit? We would say minus 75, why 75? 75 is the carrying amount, right? 75 is the carrying amount, right? So then what is going to be our accounting profit, which we will see on the statement of um, uh, income statement, right? So it's going to be 70, I mean, uh, 45,000. Now, if we had to just, now just stop there, guys. I just want to break up this 45,000, right? So what parts, what, what is sitting in that 45,000? How much of that 45,000 is capital profit? How much of that 45,000 is capital profit, do you think? Right? How much of it is capital profit? It's going to be. No, 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 wait. The capital profit is going to be 20,000, right? And how did we get that? We said because we sold it for 20, uh, 120, but it cost us 100. So the capital portion is 20. The remainder is going to be non-capital profit, right? The 25 is going to be the non-capital profit. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Don't worry about the 80% just yet. We're going to get to the 80% just now. Okay. What are you confused about? What don't you understand? So capital profit is the amount, how much, what is the, remember we said when you're talking about capital profit a couple of days ago. No, the 25% will be non-capital profit. Um, the when we're talking about uh, capital profit a couple of days ago, we said capital profit is basically the inflation on asset. How much more did it cost us, right? So we we first bought it for a hundred thousand. Now we were able to sell it for two hundred thousand. So the inflationary gain, right? The inflationary gain on that asset is twenty. Does everybody get that? The difference between capital profit and capital gain. So, so for back 200, there isn't a difference between capital profit and capital gain for back 200. 
later on you might get a difference all right so for back to 100 there won't be a difference but in later years you there might be a difference okay okay cool right so now let's have a look at the tax side all right so again we sold it for 120 all right we sold it for 120 what is the capital gain let's start off with the capital gain so if we sold it for 120 and our cost price was 100 the capital gain would be 20000 happy everybody knows how we got the capital gain or the capital profit the inflationary profit how much of the profit was as a result of inflation now the question is what amount of this 20000 is going to be taxed right what amount it's go only going to be 80 percent right 80 percent times times 20 is going to be 16,000 rand right? so only 16,000 rand can be taxed how did we get 16,000 multiplied it by the inclusion rate which will be given to you in the question right the inclusion rate will be given to you in the question right so that is the capital portion now here up here on the top I'm going to do the recoupment or the non-capital portion so now I need to limit my selling price to the cost price. So now I say, okay, if, so, so, so I've dealt with the amount above 100, now I need to deal with the amount under 100, right? So I say, okay, so cost price is 100. The tax base is 60. So what is going to be my recoupment? Recoupment is going to be 40. Now this looks exactly the same as what we did um, in the last one, right? This is the non-capital portion. This is the recoupment. Okay. Any questions? Any questions so far? Okay. So now let's have a look at how we've broken uh, is, is it this? Yes, yes, yes. It's the same because we limited it to cost. You're right. It's the same because we limited it to cost. Right. Now have a look at how, how we've done it here. Right. We've said, okay. We've said, okay. So we said the accounting, the accountant would have included 45,000. That's okay. That's you guys knew that, but now the, out of that 45,000, 20,000 is capital or inflationary, and the other 25,000 is going to be the normal profit. And if you go back to scenario to scenario one or scenario A, you'd find that the profit that we had there was 25,000, right? Um, so 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 there's no surprise um, with that one, right? So so that's the non-capital. Uh, portion right now when we look at the recoupment the recoupment is going to be 40,000 and the capital gain is going to be 20,000 out of that 20,000 only 16 can be taxed right only 16 can be taxed right now let's try and prepare the 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 um, calculation for taxable profits we'll start off I'm not going to deal with the with the permanent differences. We'll start off with depreciation. Again, we're going to add back the depreciation minus the wear and tear. All right, we adding, we're removing the accounting effect, and we replacing it with the tax effect. Okay. Now, let's deal. Let's start dealing with profit. The first profit that we need to deal with is the capital profit. Right. So the, so the capital gain. So how, how would we deal with the capital gain? Right. If we had to remove the accounting effect, what would you do to remove the accounting effect for the capital gain only? Right. You would. Now you need to think to that. Okay, so what did I do? I added 45. So in order to remove 
the capital profit element, I need to subtract, but what amount do you need to subtract? You need to subtract only what? Only 20. You see that? You're subtracting 20, right? And then what are you going to replace that 20 with? 16. Okay, so the net effect, right? The net effect is going to be minus 20 plus 16. Why are we adding 16? Because 16 can be taxed, 16,000 can be taxed. So minus 20,000 capital profit plus 16 taxable capital gain, the net effect is going to be minus 4,000 rand. Let's have a look at that. All right. So let's have a look at this here now. So you can see that what we've done, where's my pen? Um, what we've done here as a shortcut, as a shortcut, what we've done is we've taken the capital gain multiplied it by 20%. Why 20%? Because 80, because 100 minus 80, right? The inclusion rate is 80. 100 minus 80 gives us 20%. And the 4,000 rand is the amount that we remove, right? So that one entry there has taken into account that whole discussion that we've had. Does that make sense? Right? Everyone on chat? Does everyone understand? Does everyone know why it's a permanent difference also? Right? Because remember, taxable capital gain is a permanent difference. Yeah? Yes. Now, what do we do with what do we do with the non-capital profit? What do we do with the non-capital profit? Here we're going to remove the effect of the non-capital profit, the non-capital accounting profit. How do we do that? We say, okay, we added it when we are calculating profit before tax. So if you want to remove that, we're going to minus it or subtract it. And then we're going to replace it with the recoupment. So we're going to add the 40,000. So similar to what we did in the last example. All right. Does that make sense to everyone? So this is exactly the same as the last example. Um, and I say here, there's no need for us to worry about the other 20,000 because that's already been dealt with. Okay. There's no need for us to worry about the capital profit because it's already been dealt with. So, in effect, we've we've removed the entire 45, which was a, the accounting profit, and we've replaced it by the by the 16 and the 4 40,000. Does everybody understand what we've done? Any questions? It seems like you've got it. It seems like most of you guys have gotten it now. Okay, so you want to quickly deal with a loss situation. Okay, so um, in this situation, we sold it for 60,000 Rand, right? So 60,000 Rand is the selling price. The capital, the, the accounting uh, carrying amount was 75,000 Rand. So we've sold it for a loss of 15, right? We sold it for a loss of 15. Um, on the tax side, we need to change our colors. On the tax side, the selling price is 60,000. The tax base is going to be 60,000. So we have a situation where we've sold it for no. Okay, or, or, or the profit or the effect of the sale is gonna be no. Right, so that's what that looks like. For, for part C, we did not need to do the um, uh, taxable capital gain, the, the, the taxable profits, and that's because it's going to be the same. It's going to look very similar to part D. So we'll do part D instead. Right. So part D now, we sell it for very little. Right? So we sell it for 40,000. Right. So let's start calculating for part D. Right. So we say, okay, we sold it for 40,000. That's our selling price. And this is the accounting side. We have a Accounting ca carrying amount of 75, which means what then is going to be our, we're going to have a loss on sale of 35, accounting loss of, on sale of 35, right? So now let's look at the tax side. We say, okay, we sold it for 40,000. We had a tax base 
of 60,000, we have a scrapping allowance of 20. Okay, we have a scrapping allowance of 20. All right, so let's have a look at what that looks like. So this is the calculation that we would have come up with. Um, there's, so, so yeah. So if we have a look here, we made a, a counting loss of 35. We made a scrapping allowance of, of um, 20, right? Now I told you for back to 100, we're not dealing with capital losses. So just ignore that, right? Um, so what, so you sell for more, do you go to capital gain? Yes, if you sell for more than the, than the cost price. No, no, if you sell for more than it costed you, it's a capital gain. If you sell for more than the tax base, it's a recoupment. If you sell for less than the tax base, then it's a scrapping allowance. Does that make sense to everyone? More than the cost price, you, you're going to create a capital gain. Less, uh, more than the tax base, it's going to be a recoupment. Less than the tax base, it's going to be a scrapping allowance. Okay, now when we were calculating accounting profit, we would have subtracted the 35,000, right? Loss on sale. So in order to remove the effect of the loss on sale, we're going to add it back. And we're going to replace it with the, account, with the tax treatment of minus 20. Does everybody understand that? All right, so we have the accounting prof, the accounting loss of 35, right, which we will add back. Why are we adding it back? Because we subtracted it when we are calculating accounting profit, right? So we add back this to remove the effect, right? So we subtracted it when we calculated accounting profit. So now to remove the effect, we need to add it back. We then need to replace that loss, right? We need to replace that loss with a scrapping allowance. And how would we replace it? By minusing the scrapping allowance of 20,000. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Any questions about what we did today? We did, a, we did quite a few examples. Um, any questions about what we did today? Is there any example that you want me just to go over once more before we go to the last slide? Okay, so everyone seems to be okay. I assume everyone understands what we what we're talking about. Okay, because no one has any questions. Right. Okay. How would you account? How would you account for profit for question C? Okay, that's a good one. Okay, so here, what you would do is you would add back the fifteen. Why would you add back the fifteen? Right. So, so Gary is asking about uh, scenario C, where we sold it for sixty thousand. What would we do in terms of the um, uh, taxable profits? Right. We would add back the fifteen. Why are you adding it back? Because we minused or we subtracted it from accounting profit. So we add it back to remove the effect. Right. When it comes to scrapping allowance, the scrapping allowance is zero. So we we do nothing. So we just add back the fifteen. Okay, that's what we would do in that scenario. Any other questions? Okay, cool. Now, so, so far we've spoken about temporary differences that arise because of the accrual uh, slash hybrid method that is used by the accountant and the tax man. Then we spoke about a depreciation uh, difference rates of depreciation and wear and tear. And we said, okay, because the different rates of depreciation and wear and tear, we're going to have different carrying amounts, different tax base. And when we sell the item, we're going to have uh, accounting profit, taxable profit, and um, recoupment and taxable capital gain. Um, so because of those things, we can have the second category, which is categories, uh, or which is temporary differences that arise because of a depreciable asset. Now, the last type of temporary dis, uh, difference is 
a difference that arises because of an assessed loss. Now, what is an assessed loss? What does an assessed loss mean? Well, when you calculate taxable capital, uh, uh, when you calculate your taxable profits, there is a um, situation where you can end up in a taxable loss, which means you've made a loss from the tax perspective, right? Um, uh, and that does not mean necessarily that you've made a loss from the accounting perspective, okay? You can still make an accounting profit and makes a taxable loss. And that's because of the different rates of depreciation and that sort of stuff, right? So, so, um, so there, there is instances where you can make a taxable loss. Now, when you make a taxable loss, technically, SARS is supposed to pay you, right, um, the taxable loss multiplied by the tax rate. So 28% or whatever the, the, the taxable loss is. They're supposed to pay it to you. But they don't do that, right? Instead, what they say is, we can keep this taxable loss as basically a credit, right, for, for, for the coming years, right? So if you do make a profit in the coming years, you can then net off the future profits against this taxable loss that you made, right? And that is called an assessed loss, right? So an assessed loss is um, a situation where in the prior years, the previous years, tax uh, SARS said that you had made a taxable loss, right? And they keep that taxable loss or that assessed loss, they keep it for you until you start making profits and then they'll net that tax loss off against your future profits. Now, because of that, you can have a situation where you have in effect made a, a, a um, an accounting profit, you might also have made a taxable profit, but the amount of tax you pay will be nil because you're now netting off that loss against the, the assessed loss against the current year taxable profits. Um, you'll see that in your textbook, we the textbook speaks a lot about um, situations where sometimes a tax assess loss will not be allowed to be deducted if you have multiple companies if you have subsidiaries and all of that um, that is not important for you now you'll deal with that later all you need to know is that in back 200 the question will tell you if a taxable loss can be deducted against future profits or not Obviously, if it can't be deducted, then you don't have an assessed loss, right? So then it means nothing. So basically, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, for back to 100, the assessed loss can always be deducted. Uh, because then we won't be testing anything if it wasn't deductible, okay, against future profits. Does anyone have any questions? We, we, we are at the end of the lecture now, but I just want to make sure that I swing back and ask and, and make sure I answer all your questions. Um, there were a few that I maybe said 